Sparky? Do you know where the word circus came from? Can't say that I do. It's a Latin word, and it means circle. Can that be a fact? Sure. Uncle Joe and I looked it up. You know, the Romans had a circus so big that it was a whole mile around. They had chariot races in it. No. It was called the, um, they called it the, uh... They call it the Circus Maximus. That's Latin, and it means a, the great circle. Uncle Joy never forgets anything. I ain't so sure about that. Did you bring me them shoelaces I wanted? Oh, doggone it, Peter. Completely slipped my mind. See there? He never remembers nothing important. <laughs> oh, thank you. Got any mail for me? Oh, no, not this time. Got another one of those letters for the boss, though. Yeah, here it is. My gosh, the same handwriting, yeah. too. How many does this make? It's the fourth one that's come to winter quarters. Yeah, that's right. Let's see. One came from Henderson, Mitchville, Shelby, and, and Cutbank. Every one of them getting closer. What are you doing? Smelling. The same smelling perfume, too. Oh, Pete, really? Ah, now, never hurry an artist when he's putting the finishing touches on his masterpiece. So much trouble for a little old button. Yeah, well, that little old button might be the one that holds your pants up. Did you ever think of that? It's on my sleeve. Hold still, will you? Do you want me to stick you or something? Wowie! Who is that? Could you tell me where I'd find? Oh, you're Corky. And you must be Joey, the school teacher who became a clown. I know all about you. You do? I'm sorry, this isn't very fair of me. But Timothy has written me so much about all of you, it's like meeting old friends. Timothy? Timothy Champion. Then you're the one that's been right. If you're looking for Tim Champion, he's over in his quarters working on the payroll. Thank you, Joey. And you're right, Cook. I'm the one who's been writing all the letters. Gosh, he sure is nice. Come in. I knew you were busy, but I couldn't wait any longer. So I threw the book of etiquette away and came a calling. Dad's been dragging me all over the country while he looked at his properties. You're not angry, are you? You're even prettier than I remember, if that's possible. And you're even more gallant, if that's possible. How are you, Timothy? Well, I'm fine, Rosemary. Timothy. Nobody's called me by that name in years. I'm glad. That makes my using it even nicer. I've missed you, Rosemary. I don't believe it. With all the excitement of the circus, you probably haven't given me a thought in years. I've carried this ever since I left home. It's a bad picture. If you'd asked me... I've missed you too, Timothy. Well... Tell me all about yourself, Rosemary. There isn't much to tell. After we decided what we decided, I, I went to Europe. I even saw a circus in Italy. Bet it wasn't as good as mine. I'll bet it wasn't either. She's pretty as a picture and a real lady, too. I knew that the minute she spoke to me. And she knows all about us, too. Mr. Champion wrote and told her. And I guess that explains the letters, but who is she and what's she doing here? Well, she called him Timothy. Now, there isn't anyone but a real close friend to dare call him Timothy unless they were looking for a punch in the nose. I like her. And I like you, too, Corky. Uh, Rosemary, I want you to meet Pete, the strength of our circus, Joy, the laughter, and Corky, the heart. Gentlemen, this is Miss Anderson. Pleased to meet How you. How do you do? Hi. And I'm glad to know all of you. But it's not Miss Anderson, it's Rosemary. Oh. <laughs> uh, what, would you care to sit down and have something to eat with us, Rosemary? Thank you, Joey, but I'm much too excited to eat. But don't let me interrupt you. Well, <laughs> Rosemary and I have known each other for a long time. In fact, she used to let me carry her books home from school. <laughs> <laughs> Timothy didn't know it, but all of those meetings weren't accidental. I planned them. 
If I hadn't, I never would have seen him. He was very bashful. I was not. I just didn't want to be called a sissy. A man's got his pride, you know. And a woman, her patience. You promised to show me the circus. At your service, madame. See you later, fellas. Goodbye. Bye -bye. See you later. Bye. Don't you think she's beautiful, Pete? Yeah. She's real pretty, and she's real rich. Hmm? I knew who she was as soon as I heard her name. She's Mike Anderson's daughter. Who's he, Pete? A millionaire mining and railroad man. She sure seems to like Mr. Champion. <laughs> the cats. He's one of the best in the business. think of my circus. Oh, I think it's wonderful. Now then, turn about is fair play. I've accepted your hospitality, you've got to accept mine. I'll expect you for lunch on Sunday at the hotel, and that includes Joey and Corky and Pete. Sure, we'll come. It'll do us good to get the smell of the circus out of our noses for a while. Then I'll expect you. Now then, how about that cotton candy you promised me? Now, Rosemary, you've already had a hot dog, peanuts, and popcorn. You're gonna make yourself sick. I'm willing to pay the price. might not have been too easy, but it was lots more fun. Look at what they put a man's coffee in and expect him to have his fill. <laughs> How about some more sandwiches, Porky? No, thanks, Mr. Anderson. The sandwich is a little small, but I made up for it by eating a lot of it. <laughs> but I will have some more punch. <laughs> <laughs> Rosemary tells me Tim's got himself a real nice circus. The best, Mr. Anderson. Mm, I'd like to go out and see it for myself, but I've been kind of busy these days. Well, they do say the more successful a man is, the less time he has to enjoy his success. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, Joey. <laughs> but it's not my fault. I wanted Tim to come in with me years ago. I wanted him to take some of the responsibility off my shoulders. Well, he couldn't see it. Oh, Tim, we were just talking about you. Yeah? I hope you didn't tell him about the time I broke your office window with a slingshot. <laughs> <laughs> As a matter of fact, I did. But come to think of it, you never did pay me. I tell you what I'll do. I'll work it all. That's what I'd like you to do. I think it's about time you stop gallivanting around the country and settle down anyhow. What do you say, Tim? Ready to come in with me? Now, it's not fair to make him make another decision. He's already made one today. Timothy and I are going to be married. 
Tim's never neglected the circus before. It used to always come first over everything. Well, I guess planning on getting married must make a change in a man. It sure does. Maybe everything will be normal after the wedding. Boy, I sure hope so, Corky. This outfit is going to pop and fast. There's nothing is working smooth. And we had some more trouble today. Two of Mel's cats tangled, and before we could get them apart, one of them was scratched up quite a bit. Yeah, and the fat lady wants to quit. Says he's losing weight, sitting around here doing nothing. This outfit ought to move on. We can't. Not until after the wedding. Why not? Why not what? Why not move on? Look, Pete, the first stop is only 40 miles away. Now, we could get up there and put on a show and still be back here in time for the marriage ceremony. Think Tim would go for it? Well, there's only one way for us to find out. Let's go ask him. All right. Come on. Come on. Oh, I'm glad you came, fellas. I want to talk to you. Make yourselves comfortable. I've been so busy lately, we haven't had a chance to see each other. Oh, you don't have to explain to us, boss. You got your shoulder to the wheel again now, though. I'm sure glad to see it. That goes for me, too, Tim. Nobody can run this outfit as well as you. Mm. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. The circus. Sit down, Joey. We've been together a long time. Good or bad, somehow we always made out. I don't remember the bad things, only the good. That's the way it should be, Corky. That's how I'll always remember it. <laughs> For a minute, it almost sounded like he was thinking of leaving the circus. You had me scared, too. No use beating around the bush. I'm selling out. I've given it a lot of thought. This is the only way I can be fair to Rosemary. But she said she loved the circus. She told me herself. This isn't her decision, Corky. Fine. Maybe she'd like being with us, Tim. Why don't you ask her? Even if she said yes, it wouldn't make any difference. No. Tim's right. I, I hate to admit it, but he's right. Rosemary's a lady. This is no life for her, moving around in a wagon, living out of a suitcase. Uh, you gotta have sawdust in your veins to live this kind of life. Thanks for understanding, Joey. Well, I guess that's that. When do you figure on selling, Tim? As soon as I get these books straightened out, I'm getting in touch with the Gordon brothers. Yeah, I heard of them. They, they got shows all over the country. Yeah, they'll swallow us down in one gulp. I hope it gives them a stomachache. Good morning. Corky, would you please be a good boy and find Timothy and tell him I'm here? We're going to see the minister this morning. Be glad to, Miss Anderson. Tell me what's wrong, Joey. I don't want to, but I will. Tim is selling this circus because of you. You think I'm to blame? No, no, I don't, but... Well, you're not stopping him, and that's a mistake. Timothy's a grown man. He made his own choice. Well, when a man loves a woman, he'll... He'll do a lot for her happiness, even if it means sacrificing his own happiness. The circus isn't the only place a man can be happy. There's a home and children and a good business. That's what I want for Timothy. Well, I sure hope it works, Rosemary, for both of you. I'll make it work. You forget one thing, Joey. I love Timothy. At least they still have you and Joy and Pete. We'll stay together no matter what happens, won't we, Bimbo? <laughs> Gentlemen, this is Bimbo. He's gentle as a baby and smart as they come. He's a fine-looking tusker. Yeah, it's too bad we can't use him. Maybe we can sell him off to the zoo. Well, I kind of hate to see Bimbo sold off. He and Corky have become great friends. Who's he? Well, Corky's a little boy we adopted, although Joy the Clown really takes care of him. His mother and father were a high-wire act. Oh, very interesting. Well, uh, shall we take a look at the rest of it, Mr. Champion? Sure. Follow me, gentlemen. <laughs> What happened to you? Well, the circus is being sold to the Gordon brothers, and they say I'm replaceable. So I've just been Shanghai to Alaska. Alaska? 
Well, gentlemen, you've seen all of it. Everything considered, Mr. Champion, I see no reason why we can't do business together. Come in. Oh, Joey, come on in. Gentlemen, I want you to meet Joey, a great clown and an even greater human being. Joey, I want you to meet the Gordon brothers. Mr. Champion tells me you take care of that boy, uh, what's his name? Uh, Corky, yes. Well, I'm afraid we can't have any youngsters around our shows. But there's no need to worry about that problem now. We have all the clowns we need for this season, perhaps next year. Now, wait a minute. If Corky, Joey, and Pete aren't in on the deal, then it's off. Tim, don't you worry about it. Corky and I can take care of ourselves. I don't care what Joey says. If you want to buy this circus, you'll have to keep Corky, Joey, Pete, Bimbo, and the rest of my men, or there's no deal. But, Tim, I just can't go along with sending Pete to Alaska, breaking up Corky and Bimbo, and scattering my men to the four corners of the country. Well, Tim, on second thought, I guess we might be able to change our plans. But, H.B., you said... Let me handle this, Sam. Well, Tim, since you feel so strongly about your troop, we'll arrange it so they can stay together. That's fine. Thanks a lot. I'll drop a bill of sale for you. Good. Let's go, Sam. H.B., are you out of your mind? This will upset all of our plans. You worry too much. I've got a very short memory. Once we take over Tim's show, I'll forget everything I ever said to him. That's why I don't want anybody to see me. I'm supposed to be getting dressed. Well, then what are you doing here? I've got to find out something. Corky, what's wrong with Timothy? Oh, nothing's wrong. I want to make Mr. Champion happy. It would help an awful lot if you'd tell me what's troubling him. Mr. Champion loves you, but he also loves the circus. I don't see what you mean. Didn't you know he sold the circus? Well... What's that got to do with it? I think that's what's wrong with him. My Uncle Joyce says that once you get sawdust in your blood, it's awful hard to get out. Thanks, Corky. If that's all it is, I'm sure I can make him happy. Joy, you better make sure you got the ring. Oh, now, Tim, that's the third time you've asked me in the last five minutes. Of course I've got the ring. I got it right. I did have it. Uh, look in your coat pocket. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. look in my coat. <laughs> oh. Hey, Pete! Pete! Where do you think you're going? Checking in here till I get a new job. A new job? Sure. The Gordon brothers gave me my choice of going to Alaska or quitting. So I quit. They can't do that. Oh, no? Well, they did. They've also posted a notice saying who they're firing. Joey and Gambino top the list. And they're sending Bimbo to a zoo. They're not living up to their part of the deal. I'll fix that right now. Timothy. The guests are waiting. Well, I'm sorry, darling. Will you please tell the guests the ceremony will be a little late? What? There's trouble over at the circus grounds. I've got to straighten it out. But that shouldn't be your worry. You don't own it anymore. It's still my concern. I'll only be a little wild. Timothy. I think I'd better tell the guests not to wait. But I'll only be a few minutes. I'm afraid that would be too long. Timothy, I can't marry a man who's in love with two women. Two women? I don't know what you're talking about, honey. I'm talking about your circus. She's still in your mind, and you'll never be happy anywhere without her. That's not true. Yes, it is. You can lie to yourself, but not to me. But, darling, don't you see? we? We can still get married. It wouldn't work out, Timothy. The circus is your whole life. There wouldn't be room enough in it for me. At least not right now. Perhaps you're right. But I'll be back. Joey, may I have the ring, please? What's this for? A reminder, in case you ever get the sawdust out of your blood. Goodbye, Tim. Good luck. 
Tomorrow afternoon at 1.50, join the action as we take you live to Perth and the Wacker for the first test between Australia and New Zealand. Can our lads keep up the pace they set in England? Find out from 1.50 tomorrow afternoon right here. And now, Mikhail's Navy is next on 9.